people crazy stuffing your mouth with Whopper burgers and just pigging out. And if you're from Chicago, you don't want to be up in Uncle Remus and Harold's chicken banging with the mild sauce and eating Italian beef extra cheese dipped well. Only people from Chicago know what I'm talking about. But your discretion is advised. I already know it's a premiere so we are on my bbl series part five so in this video we're going to be discussing preparing for surgery so what are the things that you need in order to prepare for surgery now that you've made the choice to have it you found your doctor you know the risk you're ready to move forward you're going to prepare for surgery what do you need First, you need to get clearance from your primary care doctor. As I stated in one of my previous videos, I made an appointment with my doctor and I was blunt. I let her know, hey, I'm getting a BBL. What test do you need to do to make sure that I am physically capable to get this surgery and I am not putting myself at a health risk? Here I just inserted a clip so you guys can see me at my primary care doctor getting my EKG. So I got clearance from my PCP first. So you want to know what items you're going to need beforehand. So now that everything is set in motion and you're preparing for it, you need to know what do I need in order to go forward with my BBL. So for me personally, I made a to buy list. On this to buy list, I had my BBL pillow. I had little urinals so that I can urine out of. I had an extra faha. I had a waist trainer. I had got um, olive oil, olive olive vera gel. I got arnica gel. I had bought Tylenol extra strength 500 milligrams. I made sure that I got a cushion for my bed. I had got extra garbage bags. So there was a list of things that I got ahead of time so that I could make sure that I was prepared afterwards. I'm going to insert a little clip here, guys, so that you can see me shopping for my BBL. And then I'm going to also show you guys a clip of me after I've got everything and I started putting everything away and organizing my room with the items that I have for my BBL. So stay tuned for that quick clip. Some of the items that I have on my list. Um, I have to get a sheet set. I have to get like a mattress cover, some pillowcases, body pillows, um, Hiblikins, dial soap, compression socks. So there are a few items that I am going to be getting. So I'm just going to be grabbing that stuff and kind of recording as I grab it. Okay. It's coming along. It's coming along. I still got a lot more stuff I got to do. Let me step back so y'all can get a full view. It's coming along. You see, it's not as bad as it was at first. Still bad, though. Still got a lot of work to do. But it's coming along. We're getting it together. Getting it together. So next thing that I did, I made a to-do list at home. What was everything that I needed to do before I had my surgery? That way, I wouldn't be trying to figure out things after I had surgery. And I'm sore, and I'm like, oh, I got to do laundry. Oh, I got to go grocery shopping. Oh, I'm in pain. I can't do everything. So... Before I had my surgery, I made sure that I did all the laundry. I detail cleaned my house. I made sure that I cleaned the car out, organized the car. I made sure that I stocked up the refrigerator. I made sure that all of my children's hair was done. Yes, yeah, something that simple I had to make sure was done. I made sure that the room was organized for when I came home from surgery. I made sure that I had bought the items that I would need in order to eat after surgery that ensured the most fat survival. It's a little technique called feed the fat. So if you've never heard of it, I'll talk to you guys about that in another video. But just so you know, there are certain foods that you can eat to enhance your fat survival after your BBL fat transfer. So now that all that's done, you want to go ahead and knock out scheduling your pre-op visit. Your pre-op visit is just what it sounds like, your pre-operation visit. This is the visit where you're going to go to your doctor that you've chosen, you set your date with, and you're going to go ahead and start talking about, you know, what maybe it is that you need to do, the do's, the don'ts, the stops before you have your surgery. So at this pre-op visit, your doctor is just going to revisit everything that you discussed in your consultation. Go ahead and bring that wish pick along with you again so you can just kind of clarify once again what it is that you're hoping to achieve and your doctor can confirm that they can achieve it. Next, what you're going to do is the do's and the don'ts. 
So you need to stop this eight weeks before surgery if you're doing any of these things. The first thing is stop smoking. That's all nicotine. Patches, whatever, the gum, the vapes, all of that. Marijuana, you smoke a little. <laughs> you like the chief chief. You need to cut it all out. Just cut it like that song. You need to cut it. You need to cut it. Okay, because what can happen is that can mess up your fat grafting and it actually can burn you from the inside out. So you do not want to smoke. Um, smoking is a big, big risk to your health, especially if you're going under anesthesia. What you want to do is any use of any recreational drugs, like I already said, if you're smoking a little <laughs> But for people who do other things outside of that, you just want to completely stop any use of recreational drugs. So if you're taking pills or whatever it is that you're doing, that's your turn up or whatever, you want to stop all of that eight weeks before your surgery. Um, if there is weight to lose, you wanna do it now. So if you went to your doctor and they said, hey, okay, you're 180, but you're only 5'4", you need to lose 30 pounds before we can proceed with this surgery, this is the time to do it. Don't wait till the last minute. You don't wanna procrastinate. You wanna get on it now. You wanna start losing that weight. Um, you can't smoke hookah, which goes hand in hand with the stop all smoking. Um, this can affect your lungs. So you don't want anything to affect your lungs when you're being put under anesthesia. You want to have a clear passageway so that you can breathe properly. The reason why is because nicotine can interfere with the recovery blood flow to the skin, which can ruin your results, as I stated before. Eight weeks before, you also want to start preparing for who's going to drive. Who's going to be your designated driver? Who's going to be the person to take you to surgery? Who's going to be the person to bring you home from surgery? Who's going to sit in that waiting room for two to three hours while you get your surgery performed on you? If you need medication to be picked up, who's that person that's going to run and go get it? So you need to have all of that prepared. Who's going to cook your first meal when you come home? What are you going to eat? You need to start preparing all of this now. Yes, I know it's like, well, it's still two months away, but you need to be prepared because this is not just going to the doctor and getting a tooth pulled or just going to the doctor and getting a checkup you're actually undergoing cosmetic surgery and you need to make sure that you are properly taken care of by whoever it is is going to be your designated person that's what i like to call it two weeks before surgery you need to stop alcohol yes that means wine too for all my wine drinkers you need to stop taking aspirin to leave advil vitamins anything you don't want to take any medicine not even cough syrup because these will make you bleed in surgery you will be bleeding like crazy if you do not follow these instructions so you want to stop these things because they're blood thinners they thin your blood yes that is true they thin your blood you don't want anything to thin your blood because it's going to make you bleeding you don't want the surgery table to look like you didn't sat up there got cut up cut up and it's going to be worse than what it is okay so next you don't want to expose yourself to the sun without sunscreen if you are like me and you chose to have your surgery in the summer date you want to just make sure that you got some sunscreen you're spraying it you're applying it which you should be doing anyway but you just kind of want to make sure that that's you're, you're not exposing yourself to the sun because it can interfere with your surgery that you get your blood work done by the facility that your surgeon recommends so my surgery um was recommended by quest diagnostics so my doctor had me go to quest diagnostics and have my blood work drawn two weeks before surgery and doing so they were able to see for themselves also was i healthy enough to go forward with this procedure Two days before your surgery. So two days before your surgery, but personally for me, I did it like a month before surgery, like I showed you guys me going shopping. You want to make sure that you have these items. Hiblican soap. Dial soap. I don't know what your doctor recommend, but my doctor recommended these items. And what you're going to do is um, you want to pick up the Ted Hose, which is the compression socks. You can find those at Walmart, Target J. I don't like Walmart personally. I'm sorry, Walmart. But I like Target J. Find, um, you want to get an extra faha, your butt pillow. You want to pick up any needed prescriptions by your doctor. For me personally, I didn't get my medications two days before, but I had my person who my designated person was who self-taught K. And she went to go get my medications while I was actually in surgery. So the hip cleanse is to wash your body. You want to shave your body, vagina, underarms, legs. Just get rid of the hair, okay? It's just going to make it so much easier when you're on that surgery table. You want everything to be clean. You want everything to be free of hair. You don't want anything holding on to bacteria. You just want to get rid of it all. So just shave, get rid of everything. It makes it so much easier for your doctor to see when they're going in with their incisions and so forth. Start a light diet to avoid bloating. 
So before your surgery, you don't want to go crazy with the food. You don't want to go eating McDonald's. Ugh, you shouldn't be eating that anyway. But you don't want to go crazy stuffing your mouth with Whopper burgers and just pigging out. And if you're from Chicago, you don't want to be up in Uncle Remus and Harold's chicken banging with the mild sauce and eating Italian beef extra cheese dipped well. Only people from Chicago know what I'm talking about. But you just want to do your best, okay? You want to start a light diet. So, you know, eat baked chicken, eat salmon, lay off the starch for a while, eat some vegetables, zucchini, carrots, broccoli, um, kale. You know, you want to just do something light. That way, before you go to surgery, you're not super bloated and you're actually true to weight. You know what I mean? So for me, during this entire process, my doctor communicated with me. They emailed me documents. I'll show you guys a screen recording of the documents they emailed me here. So as you can see, they gave me like a pre-op, post-op, um, what I needed to do a few days before. They gave me uh, in instructions on everything that I needed to do. So I'm going to just show you guys here quickly, just browsing through this uh, email. They send you everything. So my doctor was extremely great with communication skills. They answered any and all questions that I had. They also sent me how much money I owed and when and when the balance was paid off completely. They sent me an email just confirming that I owed nothing. I personally had decided to go ahead and pay everything off before I had surgery. So I had a zero balance of going into surgery. So the night before surgery, I was instructed to make sure that I washed my body with hot water and dial soap. Dial soap is an antibacterial soap. So what it does is it gets rid of all the germs. Now you want to make sure that you rinse really well because there is residue that can be left from the soap. So I made sure that I use Hiblicans and Dial, but I started using both soaps four days before my surgery. I wanted to make sure that my skin was extra clean. So I started using the soaps four days before surgery just to make sure that my skin was dried out and really well so that when they were ready to perform the surgery, there wouldn't be any problems. It also helps prevent infection. Next, the night before, guess what? If you love to eat like me, no food or water after midnight. So it doesn't matter what time your surgery is the next day, you cannot eat or drink anything when the clock strikes 12 o'clock, Shaderella. Okay, so I was unable to eat or drink anything after midnight. Even when I brushed my teeth that morning, I could not swallow the water. I had to like, Swish it and spit it out. I couldn't let any of that water go down my throat or sit too long on my tongue. Nothing can go in your mouth. As I said, nothing can go in your mouth. Okay, do not chew gum either. You can't put anything in your mouth at all, whatsoever. It's like the worst feeling ever because you start feeling cotton mouth and tired. But trust me, you want to follow these instructions because they're going to ensure your safety during you being put under anesthesia. You want to prepare your car bed for when you come home okay so what i did was that night of because my driver had their own car i wasn't able to set up her car i did it the day of surgery but i just advise that if you're able to do it the night before knock it out the way go get you some plastic bags lay it in the back seat get you a pillow get you a blanket because i told y'all how i was gonna be sitting in the car so let me show after surgery you will be a little cold i don't know if it was just me or if it was everybody but me personally after surgery i had the chills so I did wish I had a blanket, which all I had was a coat, so I just put my coat over me. Um, but you want to make sure that you set the car with plastic because after surgery, the numbing fluid will begin to leak. So you will drain slightly. And I'll insert some clips to let you guys see how much I drained after surgery. I am currently four hours post-op and I just changed my um, one of them because I was bleeding really bad through it to your big day the day of surgery what do you need to wear what do you need to do on the day of surgery again you're going to take a shower that morning you're going to use the hibiclin soap or the dial soap as my doctor recommended dial but i use both because i was just freaking out to make sure that i was clean as possible you're going to wash up with both soap you in hot water and you're going to rinse your body as well as possible Afterwards, you're going to wear loose clothing to your surgery site. You're not going to wear anything tight or fitted because like I stated, you will be draining. So you want to make sure that you're comfortable because you're going to be swollen as well. So I went to Target in the men's section and I got extra large jogging pants and an extra large men's shirt. And I wore those items. I'll insert a clip of me go on my way in the door at surgery as well when I made it to the building. Uh, I am here right now at the office. Look. Can you see? And I am getting ready to get my 
BBL. As you can see, Faux Pas say, my clothes were extremely baggy, so we all are actually laughing at how they were falling off of me, but this is just to show you guys what I mean. Um, you want to make sure that you don't wear any deodorant, no dispressants. You're going to let your body just be free, whatever it's going to smell like. But if you shave like I advise you to, you shouldn't be just smelling down there. You know, the hair holds the smell. Now, you got the hair gone, you should be good. You don't want to use any lotion. You don't want to use any perfumes, okay? You don't want anything touching your body. You don't want to wear any valuables. So, I took my engagement ring off that day. Yes, I had to. But you don't want to use anything of that nature. You want to make sure that you go as plain as possible. And also, make sure your hair is in some sort of way that's easy for you to manage. So for me, I had two strand twists. It was just really easy and simple because with my two strand twists, my hair was out of my way. I didn't have to constantly lift my arms to do it. I didn't have to worry about taking a wig on and off or, oh, it's lifting. And I suggest maybe getting braids too, but I didn't want anything super long because I didn't want anything to feel heavy on me because I felt like I might have been in enough pain as it would be. Surprisingly, I wasn't, but that wraps it up for what you want to do on the day of surgery. Okay, so now we're going to just briefly discuss how you're going to sleep and how you're going to sleep in the car. So when you're in a car, I'm going to insert a clip of what I did. I have a truck, so it was a little bit easier for me. This is how I laid down in the car to ensure that I was not squishing my butt, the newly fat that was transferred. I didn't want to interfere with the hips that he had just beautifully constructed for me. So I set up the car this way. I climbed in through the trunk and then I would lay down flat because we let down the back seat and that's how I would sit in the car. Hey girl. It's okay. So I get up. Now, in the bed, I'm going to show you guys how I slept. I set up the bed, I made it up a certain way, and then I laid down on my stomach. And yes, on my stomach for eight weeks I'm straight. just laying down right now because I'm waiting on my kids to get ready so we can take them to school. Never laid on my side or my back. For eight weeks straight, I laid on my stomach. I slept that way. It was uncomfortable, but now I kind of sleep that way naturally because I was used to it for so long. So once you have all of that stuff figured out and you're all good with that and the preparation for, you know, what do you need to do before you have your surgery? What items do you need and so forth and everything that you need to go ahead and prepare for? We're going to move on to the next thing. So lastly, really in the preparation for your surgery, you want to make sure that you know about your post-op care as well. So if you're going to get lymphatic drainage massages, you need to know how much they're going to cost you and how often you need to get them. My doctor did state that they're not needed, they're not necessary, but people do get them if they choose to. For me personally, I did get about four lymphatic massages, one professionally done. I'll insert a clip here. I'll have to blur it out because I was naked in the video. But I'll insert a clip on the first day that I ever went to go get a lymphatic massage and it was literally one day after I got my surgery. And I will just say this. I was not in pain after my surgery, but I was in pain during that lymphatic massage. But then afterwards, I just said, I'm going to let my body chill. And so I didn't get another one until I was four weeks post-op. And my fiance actually performed three of them on me. And those were the only ones I got. But I will say this, getting lymphatic massages are beneficial to your recovery in my personal opinion. I'm not a doctor. I cannot give you medical advice. But I will say this, here's a picture of what I looked like before a lymphatic massage and after a lymphatic massage. All right, you all. So just remember, this was a preparation for a surgery video. So in this video, I just hope that I was able to help you understand what you need to kind of prepare for surgery, surgery mentally, physically, get everything in order in your household so that you can uh, go into surgery, feeling a little more comfortable, a little more confident about what you're about to do with your body and the decision that you decided to make. So therefore, you guys, we're going to wrap this video up. Please be sure to give it a thumbs up, a like, a comment, and a share. Remember, hashtag positive vibes only. And hit that post, notific post notification button so that you never miss the video from me. All right, y'all. Stay tuned for the next video in my BBL series. Okay, Shay Passe, it's me. I'm coming from the future. I keep forgetting to film my outro.
soul. But just remember to choose to be happy every day. Be free. Be unique. Be bold. Be frank. Ha-cha-cha.